In case you missed the news, Web 2.0 payments giant PayPal has just launched their own stablecoin on the blockchain. And combine this with many other recent developments in the crypto space, things are definitely heating up for the next wave of crypto expansion. But I want to talk about the PayPal stablecoin in particular because this is one piece of the puzzle that could represent a massive inflection point for many people using cryptocurrency that never have before in ways they haven't before and how this could tip the scale towards mass adoption. So I'm explaining everything you need to know in this video today as a blockchain developer myself works this technology on a daily basis. And if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory. On this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to get ahead of the next crypto expansion that's heating up today, then I can show you how to become a blockchain master step-by-step start to finish, break into the industry, increase your salary well past 100K, whatever your goals are, over at dappadversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's jump into this. So let's talk about payments giant PayPal launching their cryptocurrency, their stablecoin on the blockchain. So I'm recording this video just hours after this happened. I've actually found the smart contract for this deployed on the blockchain, deployed only about seven hours ago at the time I recorded this video. And so this video will get published, you know, a few days after that. And, you know, you'll probably see other takes online about this, about why it's such a big deal. There's lots of things that are pretty obvious, but I want to point out some less obvious things in this video and what you need to know. And if you stick around, I'll also take a quick tour of the source code and draw some conclusions from it at the end. All right, so first, let's talk a little bit about PayPal. Okay, so if you're brand new to the crypto space, maybe the last year or so, you may not realize that PayPal you know, has been around kind of on the fringes of crypto and has been an early adopter to this space for a very long time, okay? So again, if you're not familiar with PayPal's background, it's been one of the leading payment processors online in the Web 2.0 space for a very long time. You know, the company was co-founded by Elon Musk, gained insane popularity with the rise of eBay, and then has maintained massive market shares as a general payments platform ever since. And you know, PayPal currently has about 430 million active users. And as they've continued to develop at that platform, they want to maintain that market share. And so they've been at the forefront of crypto this entire time. They were one of the earliest people to add cryptocurrencies to their platform, support it in their mobile wallet, and so much more. So they've made a massive bet on crypto for quite some time. And this stablecoin is the next leg of that. And so what could PayPal possibly be seeing around the corner? And how are they potentially trying to get ahead of the next big expansion for crypto? Where could they see this heading? Well, I'm going to tell you what I think and try to help you connect the dots here and how we could be pretty close to this inflection point. All right, so let me kind of connect the dots for you here. So let's talk about how most people think about the crypto space right now. Crypto, and if you're going to want to use it at all, basically what you're doing is you're buying crypto either on an exchange or maybe through a mobile application that lets you take dollars or whatever your currency is and convert them into cryptocurrency and then send them out to a different wallet so that you can do things like DeFi or NFTs and you actually use the blockchain or maybe you just want to hold it in a wallet uh, to buy some coins that will appreciate in price. Now, whenever you stop doing that, okay, let's say you make some money off that either by price appreciation of coins or by selling an NFT or doing some DeFi things, and you want to take the money back out to go pay for your normal life, whether that's your rent or any of your daily expenses, you basically have to exit the crypto space. And that really limits the utility value of cryptocurrency itself. But what if what PayPal is doing is actually getting us to the point where we don't have to leave the crypto space at all, where crypto becomes a one-way street. Well, I've been talking about this vision for quite some time, and what PayPal's doing here could be the next step in that direction to enable this to happen. So let me explain how. Well, basically, as PayPal starts to continue to do this, now if you have a stable coin that's able to just plug into crypto, you have an on-ramp from PayPal into the crypto space where you have a stable coin that can now be used on bridges, it can be used on decentralized exchanges and all that type of stuff to give you the full utility benefit of being inside of crypto. But now once you have that utility benefit, how do you get the benefit in the real world? Well, let's take Venmo, for example. So lots of people use Venmo right now to pay for a significant portion of their financial transactions outside of like credit cards. So most people, it's like their first choice is to swipe a credit card, maybe with Apple Pay for point of sale systems or anything they can normally pay for with a card. And if you can't pay with the card, they usually default to stuff like Venmo. So let's take an example. Lots of people actually pay their rent to their landlord in Venmo because it's really easy. 
Or maybe they pay their friends for pizza, drinks, whatever with Venmo. And if that stuff starts to go more of a stable coin route, then you have people who are able to make those transactions if you hold crypto and do more with it. And so that's going to capture another 20% or so of people's financial life where they can't do things like with debit card and, and credit card systems and they need to do cash transactions. They can actually do them with stable coins. It makes it more useful to where you're getting the crypto space. You don't have to leave in order to have usefulness with the currencies themselves. Now, on top of that, as more consumers hold these digital dollars on the blockchain that creates more demand to do stuff with it and we're already starting to see things like point of sale systems start to take cryptocurrencies at checkout as well and if we start to see more and more point of sale systems support things like digital dollars with stable coins where they can settle those transactions on the blockchain then that means a vast majority of your financial transactions can actually be handled on chain. And that makes crypto more of a one-way street where you don't have to exit it to get back in the traditional banking system. So let's say that, I don't know what the statistics are. I'm just going to guess. Let's say that at least 50% of people's transactions take place on a card, either credit card or debit card of some kind. Okay. And that's usually with point of sale systems at like, you know, Starbucks or Target, Walmart, even Amazon online. That's not point of sale, but it's more e-commerce. Let's say that's 50% of people's transactions, maybe not total amount, but at least transactions. And then you add this other 20 to 30% maybe that comes in from like cash transactions that are done digitally with Venmo. And all those things start to become crypto. Then a good 80 to 90% of people's financial transactions on a day-to-day -day basis can be done with crypto and this is one big step in doing that. If we actually to that point, then it makes crypto this one-way street where people can get into it and they don't have to leave. And PayPal launching this stable coin could be a big match in the powder keg for all this stuff to go off and tip to that direction. All right, so that's the big reason that I don't think a lot of people are talking about online. That's the reason I to make that major point in this video. But there's a couple other points that are big for the crypto space um, that you might have seen going around, but I want to reinforce those in this video. So number one is the regulatory concerns around stable coins. I mean, stable coins have got a really bad name in the past year and a half or so. You know, we saw the Terra Luna disaster absolutely blow up with algorithmic stable coins. We've seen lots of fears of massive stable coins, you know, not necessarily having the funds that they say are backed by. And so there's been this massive scare of a regulatory crackdown on stable coins. But, you know, PayPal putting their name in the hat is a pretty good sign of legitimate stablecoin usage and the ability to get favorable stablecoin regulations. Because I don't see a world where PayPal with 430 million active users with a massive market share in the payment space is going to risk all of that just to launch a stablecoin unless they see a lot of other upside potential. So this is huge for stablecoins. All right. And the other big thing is that this is really big for the Ethereum space in general, because the implementation for the PayPal stablecoin is an ERC-20 token, which is a smart contract, which is deployed on top of the Ethereum network. And this is the actual contract for it, to my best understanding, um, at the time I record this video. And so why is that a big deal? Well, you know, everybody's always scratching their head going like, hey, what's the big blockchain that everybody's going to use in the future? There's so many. Is there going to be a leader? If you've watched my channel for any amount of time, you probably have understood that my best bet, of course, is Ethereum on this for a bazillion reasons, which I'm not going to all out on this video, again, not financial advice. But PayPal choosing this is just another vote of confidence in that direction. Obviously, I'm not surprised about that, but I like to draw the conclusion on this channel for people who are new and are just checking out the space and don't understand why I think those types of things. All right, so really quickly, I also want to talk about the actual code for this because at the time I recording this video, again, this launched hours ago. I'm doing some really basic due diligence. I want to take a look at the actual smart contract itself. So my understanding, this is the actual deployed smart contract for the uh, PayPal uh, USD token, PiUSD. Uh, again, if this gets disputed after this video comes out or before it gets published, then, uh, you know, see, again, not financial advice. I don't recommend you interact with the smart contract. I don't even think you can do anything with it at the time I record this video, but you can actually look through the source code here. Okay. So you can see it's just a single flat and solidity file. This is an... Uh, uh, ERC-20 token, so it's written in Solidity, like I was just saying. And if you read through the code here, you're going to see lots of parallels uh, to the Paxos digital dollar, okay? One of the dead giveaways is like the proposed uh, ownership transfer, the freezing functionality. And so you can see that here in the Paxos global USDP contracts, okay? It's very uh, similar to this. You can see different, um, you know, functions inside of here. It's got the basic ERC-20 functions like transfer, transfer from, allowance, and approvals, all that type of stuff. But she says stuff like proposed owner. This is basically the exact same code that's in the, um, you know, uh, the PayPal token. 
um, claim ownership, all that type of stuff, reclaim. There'll obviously be some basic naming just differences based on the token name itself. Now, that's no accident because, you know, Paxos is a financial services form that's enabling this token to exist in the first place. It's not like they copied the code. It's actually a partnership here. And that's why this looks so similar. But if you want to take a look at the actual, um, you know, smart contract code itself, it's pretty cool to look at this type of stuff. It'll definitely increase your skills as a developer just to read through this. And the nice thing is sometimes, you know, contracts can be so complex, that they're really hard to understand. But the nice thing about this is it's a stable coin that's just a flattened ERC-20 file. It's not that hard to understand. And so if you just read through the functions, it'll give you good exercise to seeing how our real world projects operates in the wild. All right, so that's an overview of the PayPal stable coin and how this could be a big piece of the puzzle that can make crypto more of a one-way street for people to get into the ecosystem and start using everything we've built in crypto with DeFi, NFTs, uh, you know, just holding coins as an investment. And then whenever they stop doing that, whether they want to borrow against those assets to actually use the money in the real world, that this could be a big piece of the puzzle for doing that to make crypto this one-way street. Because right now, it's really not for most people. Because if you can take your crypto now, spend um, you know, it on pretty much all your life, 80 to 90% of your life from point-of-sale systems to Venmo to whatever, then that is a recipe for mass adoption of blockchain technology. And so if you want to get ahead of this trend that is coming, you know, it's it's just a matter of time in my opinion, then how can you get started today? Well, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find those free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those videos and you went to the next step or hey, maybe you'll take a master shortcut entirely. You want to pause the video right now and go for the throat. I can show you how to become a blockchain master step-by-step from start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You really don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp